testimony service, you had it. You had an opportunity then. You didn't get up. That's your fault. You held back on God. God gave you a chance today to talk of his goodness and his mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. So if you'll go with me to the book of Daniel. If you get with me, if you get with me, you know what I mean by get with me? If you'll say amen when you believe it, if you'll say amen when it's right, if you'll get with me, we may get out of here quickly. But if you don't get with me, I might be here a while. I want to make sure you understand what I'm preaching today. I want to make sure you get a hold of it today. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, your God is able. Now look at yourself. Wow, how do I do that, Pastor? Look inside yourself. Look inside yourself and say, my God is able. My God is able. Do you really believe that today? Amen. Come on. I, do you really believe that today? Amen. Is your God able today? Amen. I wonder why we live so far beneath our privileges. Amen. I wonder why we believe so little sometimes. You know, Jesus, the Bible said, couldn't do very mighty, there are many mighty works in one place because of their unbelief. People just didn't believe. If you'll stand with me, the book of Daniel, the sixth chapter. I have a little bit of reading to do. If you'll bear with me. I want to set this scene for you. And I have in the past... For the sake of time, which should be a factor, but for the sake of time, I have excluded a lot of revival reading before I preach. And a lot of times it's because I feel like maybe the people already know the scriptures. But I'm finding out the more and more that I teach and preach here. That most of the people don't know the scriptures. Amen. They don't know all the stories in the Bible. And therefore I am obligated to try to spend some more time. Amen. The longer you're here in the church, the more you'll understand some of God's word. Okay. Yeah, we need somebody back there with them. And if older children can be out here, praise the Lord. If you don't want to take care of them, Pastor Will, that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll take care of everybody's children if I need to. Why? I'm the pastor. I figure if you won't do it, I will. Praise the Lord. I get no amens out of that either, but I wouldn't look for it. Praise the Lord. So in this sixth chapter of Daniel, I'd like to read a little bit, if you would. Is everybody there? Amen. Starting at verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom of 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom. And over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first, that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above all the presidents and the princesses. Listen to this. Because an excellent spirit was in him. Amen. Amen. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. I think we mentioned this a little bit today in Sunday school. 
I'd like to mention it now for those that wasn't in the morning service. Jealousy is an evil, evil thing. The Bible says it's crueler than the grave. Then the presidents and the princesses sought to find occasion against Daniel. Whenever God promotes you, people will start attacking you. Amen. Whenever God places you in a place of authority in the church, in the world, wherever you're at, the world will say the haters are going to hate. You're going to have it. But they could find none occasion nor fault for so much as he was what? Anybody reading with me today? As he was faithful. That's much needed in our day and age. Our church. I'm not preaching in Oklahoma City, Brother Morgan. Brother Miller, I'm not preaching over in Tulsa today. I'm preaching here. Sand Springs. If you're part of this church, I'm preaching to you today. Don't get your shovel out. I'm trying to shove this to somebody else. Get you a rake. Try to pull this in for yourself. Some of us need to work on our faithfulness. Neither was there any error or fault found in him. When you have no faults and errors, God will raise you up. He's not going to put somebody that's always messing up in charge of nothing. you got to be an example to the unbeliever. Amen. Verse 5, then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princesses assembled themselves to, to the king and said unto him, King Darius, live forever. Always trying to flatter somebody to get advantage. Praise the name of the Lord. All the presidents of the kingdom and the governors and the princesses and the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statue. That means they got a coup together. That's what the world would call it now. They put together a coup. Try to remove somebody out of office. To make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Trying to stroke the king's ego. Making him think that he had the ability to take care of everything on his own. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign it in right, sign the, sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. I want you to listen to this. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees. Some of us need to kneel sometimes. We don't know how to pray sometimes. Three times a day he prayed. And gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. Some of y'all too quiet when you pray. The world sometimes don't even know you're a Christian. Sometimes the world don't even know who you are. Because you kept quiet about it too long. I'm going to skip to 16. You can read the rest of this. Then the king commanded and brought Daniel to, uh, to cast him into the fire. Sorry. Let me read this right. 
Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Man, some comfort from the king is getting ready to cast you in. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords that the purpose may not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went into his palace, passed the night with fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Even people that aren't saved can't sleep at night when things aren't going right. But some of us could sleep without any bother when we know there are people that are in trouble. This is a king without the Holy Ghost. This is a king without God. Cared more about that man than some of us that claim we have the Holy Ghost. Have you lost any sleep this week over people that are lost? You've been able to sleep with all your rest knowing that there are people in your lives that are being lost? Well, I'll leave that alone for right now. The king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. When he came to the den, he cried in a lamented voice unto Daniel, and the king spake and said, O Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Great God, we come before you right now, Lord. I don't have the ability, Lord, nor the wisdom, nor the education, Lord. I lean completely on the Holy Ghost, Lord. I lean upon your power, your anointing, Jesus. God, in this very hour, I ask that you would use me, Lord, to touch the hearts of your people, God, that some way we could preach something that they could grasp a hold of who you are and how you are. Lord, that we might serve you with diligence, Lord. With our heart, Lord, and our mind, our soul, our strength. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory because it belongs to you. Let everybody say in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I took this time to go over a little bit extra today. Because I'm not sure if everybody understands all that has happened here. We have here a portion of scripture that is not a story. It is a true life event. It happened for real. Just as real as you came and got up this morning, hit your alarm or whatever you did to wake up. Just as real as the getting up and driving here and coming to the house of the Lord. These events happen just like that. They are not a story, but they are a historical fact. They are something that happened in our past time. And the Bible says that the word of God is written for our admonition. It is given to us so that we would understand and know and not make mistakes. It's for us to be a schoolmaster, as one portion said, that we could understand God a little deeper than what we know. And as we come to this portion of Scripture, the Lord began to deal with me earlier on this week. And as he began to talk to my heart and talk to my soul, he began to open up this thing a little deeper than what I've looked at it before. I've preached on it before, I'm sure, many times, but for some reason the Lord got a hold of me to, uh, this last week and really began to cause me to meditate on what it was really saying. There was a lot of things that I mentioned in the reading I stopped and took a moment to mention and to, to, to point out. Uh, but there's something more deeper than what I've even said so far. 
There is a place that we can find ourselves in. There is a there is a way that we go about our day that we seem not to understand anything that's going on. It seems like we just kind of muddle through day by day and we don't even take and recognize what's really going on. And if you look on the outset of this here and you see the story, if you will, if you see it just as a story, that's all it really is to you. That's all that really matters to you. But if you can take a little moment of time and you can listen uh, with your spiritual ears and not your natural ears, if you can open up your heart to this thing and not just another message that the pastor's preaching, I want you to really grasp a hold of something in this lesson. I want you to see something in this message uh, that God is still in control of everything. It looks like here on the onset, uh, when you start out and you begin to do something for the Lord, it doesn't matter what the position is if you have the right spirit God will raise you up and he'll use you where he wants to use you and he'll be your God and you can be his child uh, but it takes you to have an excellent spirit God doesn't want to use somebody with a nasty spirit God doesn't like using people that do not want to live for him with their whole heart mind soul and strength uh, you can do it haphazardly and that's the way your life will be just like your life becomes haphazardly your service to God becomes no rule over him no matter who had control over him he still found room and time to pray with his windows wide open the Bible says that when this decree was made he went back as he did a fourth time he wasn't just starting this out because he heard some people are trying to make a name for themselves some people are trying to do stuff just to show off who they are Trying to show that they are a child of God. When they get the chance to show the limelight. Look at me. This is what I'm doing for the Lord. But that wasn't Daniel's motive. Daniel had begun to pray for the Morgan. All the time. Three times a day. The Bible says that he sat in his window towards Jerusalem. Or towards the Holy Temple if you will. Because in Bible scripture, it told them when Solomon built that thing, he said in his prayer, Lord, if we're lost somewhere, he's just being biblical, if you will. Daniel was just trying to follow the Bible. That would be good for some of us to do. He said, look at here, if you are in captivity, Lord, if we're in captivity, if we could just look towards the temple and begin to pray, Lord, I want you to hear our voice, God. I want you to hear our supplication. I want you to make a way for us, even if we're in captivity. And all Daniel was doing was following what Solomon prayed about. Solomon prayed and said, hey, uh, I want you just to know, church, uh, that if you get in trouble, all you got to do is look towards the east. Start praying towards that holy temple and everything will be all right. Our God will hear you from your distant cry. And so this man was trying to practice exactly what he'd heard. He'd heard him say it over the days and the weeks and the years. He'd been told what the Bible says or what the men of old said, if you will. But you've been told what the Bible says. You've been preached to just like I've been preached to. We know how to get a hold of God. But I wonder if our way is being struggled because of the way we live. This man had an excellent spirit. That means that he put God first all the time. He had a good attitude. He wasn't mumbling and grumbling all the time. Talk about how bad everything was. You don't hear him playing and complaining and, and, and worrying and, and, and moaning and groaning about what's going on. The man took his situation. Said, I'm still going to praise the Lord. He still stood in the window and told the Lord, I thank you. I may be in bondage, but I still thank you. I wonder about you sometimes. You get in your situation. You lose all of your thankfulness. You lose all of your praise. You begin to fail and get worried and think, maybe God has left me here. Sometimes we don't understand where we really are. I know that Sister Holly was distraught this morning. Trouble came her way. She called me in tears. Something's going on. I can't even get to the house of the Lord. She could have took that situation. She could have just said, I'm going back home. Too much for me. 
It may happen again. I can't trust it. But instead of that, she said, I'm just going to go ahead and go on to the house of the Lord. Some of you need to go through your troubles and say, I don't care what comes my way. I don't care what troubles I got. I'm still going to make it to the house of the Lord. Got too many out of church right now that should be here today. They allow the world to take over. Just because they're in bondage doesn't mean that they don't have to be here. You can be in bondage. This is the best place for you to be Amen. if you're in bondage. Here we have this man that said, look, I made a decision in my heart. And I just made a decision. He said he knew. The Bible said he knew that they made this decree. He wasn't scared of what the law said. The law could tell me, brother, to quit preaching about against homosexuality. And I'm still going to preach it because it's Bible. They can lock me up if they want to lock me up. It's not my words. I'm not mad at anybody. And I don't hate anybody. I just have to be honest with you. The Bible says it's a wrong lifestyle. He said, I'm not afraid of who's around. You better get some Holy Ghost in you. Cause you to quit being fearful. Quit being fearful of your boss and your, and your jobs and your, and your families. Some of us are so caught away with our family, we can't even talk about God in front of them. We're afraid to say anything about Jesus. Can't talk about him. They won't receive it. Why does that stop you? Who are you? You change like a chameleon when you get in the presence of some people. You turn. Paul said, I became all things to all men. But he wasn't talking about being a chameleon. Turning to a sinner when he was around sinners. Turning into a saint when he was around saints. That ain't what he was saying. He said, I could get along with anybody. I can still reach them whether they were educated or not. I can let them know about Savior that can help them. That's what he was talking about. But some of us are chameleons. We're not like Daniel. Says, I don't care if you don't like my praying. I'm going to pray anyhow. I don't care if you don't like my singing Christian songs. I'm just going to sing them anyhow. We're chameleons. Just hang on. Pastor, what are you trying to say? We've got to get to a place in our hearts and in our minds. It doesn't matter what the royal decree is. It doesn't matter what trouble is coming my way. All that matters to me is that I understand that where my health is and where my strength and how I make my stand is on my knees. And when I begin to pray, that all of heaven wakes up. I believe that when a child of God begins to call on their father, I believe he almost just tells heaven, hey, you got to hush up for a little while. I've got a child that's crying. I've got somebody. You ever been in a crowd of people and you heard your child cry? You said, hold up. I think my baby's crying now. I believe the Lord is just like that. All in heaven, all the angels that cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God over. Hey, hush up, angels got a child that's crying out to me right now. I believe that. Would you reach up for him and begin to cry out of an honest heart and not to be seen? I want you to understand that. Daniel didn't throw his windows open to be seen. He wasn't trying to make a big show for himself. He said, I don't care who hears me and who don't. I've got to worship him. Y'all sing that song, I got to praise I gotta praise, I gotta praise, and I gotta get it out. I gotta praise. That's the way Daniel was saying here. I gotta praise, I gotta get it out. I can't hold it. Doesn't matter who's watching. Some of y'all can't praise because you're worried about who's watching. So we know that he was taken by this king. And I want you to understand something about this. It's a type of the shadow. There are all kinds of people who are going to try to put you into a pit. All kinds of people are going to try to put you in their cage. Put you in their little corner, their little room. They're going to try to stop you from being who you are. And they have all kinds of ways. And this way here, he said, hey, I'm going to put you down in a pit. They're always claiming that they're going to devour you. I've got something that will destroy you. You can't be who you need to be because
much are going to be torn down. There's always some kind of fear factor. You realize that? The devil always tries to use fear. But the Bible says he, talking about God, has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. My mind sound today. I'm not afraid of the devil or any of his works. I'm not afraid of losing my battle. I'm on the Lord's side now. I'm on the Lord's side now. I'm not worried about losing no more. He said, so he took him and threw him in the pit. Sometimes we're cast into our pit of despair. And our, our doubts and our disbelief and our fearfulness were cast into a pit. And it seems like even though the cave has been sealed up, you know that's not the only time that happened. Now, there was a man that they said Lazarus was already dead. Everybody gave up on him. The family, the friends, they said he's dead. He probably stinks. They put a stone on top of the cave and said no more Lazarus. But I'll tell you, there's a God that knows Lazarus. God knew exactly where Lazarus was. And he said, just because you gave up, just because you give in, doesn't mean I'm done with that person. And just because Daniel was down the pit, there was the devouring lions there. It was a bad situation. It was a horrible place to be. But don't give up and don't despair. I'm your God. I'll take care of you. Through troubles, I'll take care of you. They put him in there and closed it up. Left him alone. Surely, Brother Miller. Surely he'll be dead my morning. Hey, Brother Miller, can you can't take it this long. Surely you're going to give up before you get what you want. Surely I'm going to give in. Hey, you can't make it on your own. There's no way to raise that child by yourself. That's what they have a serve to you. But he's a liar. He's a liar. Amen. I want you to hear me today. With all them voices in your head tell you you can't succeed. You can't break the addictions. You can't break the problems. You can't get past them. They're liars and puppet pit because my God is a consuming fire. He can destroy whatever yoke is on your neck. Whatever chain he can break it asunder. My God is a great God. And when they come you say it's your God able to save you. You need to stand up with your big boy panties if you will and say my God is a great God. He's not going to let me lose. He's not going to let me fall. Amen. I've got a great God today. You ought to say it yourself. Why does somebody say my God's able today? My God's able. My God's able. The very thing that was going to destroy him. Listen to me. Listen to me. The very thing that was set up to destroy him. The lions that were hungry and ready to devour. The very things that the enemy had set up to destroy them. Became his resting place. You ever had a situation in your life? Dark in the night, no light coming in. You tried to lay down, but all that ferociousness is around about you wouldn't let you sleep. I can't sleep because my trouble is so bad. I can't sleep because I'm so upset about what's going on. You want to tell that trouble, I'm going to rest in the Lord tonight. You want to talk to the Lord and say, Lord, it's in your hands. I'm going to take the trouble that set up the destroy me. I'm going to lay it on my pillow and I'm going to sleep on it and not worry one bit. Anybody know God's able? Come on, you ought to shout at God's able to take your very problem, the very destroying thing, and cause you just to rest on it. I'm not worried about it, Grandma. I'm going to sleep now. I know these things are alive. I know they're right here. I can feel them. They're all around there. But instead of being afraid, oh, I'm going to pull them up to my head. I'm going to sleep on them to show the devil. I'm not afraid. I'm not worried. I'm not going to fall down. I've got my problems under my head. I'm sleeping restfully because my God is able to do. I don't know if you believe that today. I wonder if you really believe it. I wonder if you're even awake to know it. That your God is real. You understand that God is able today. But you've got to be like Daniel. Something about Daniel that's not like us sometimes. 
He was faithful. When's the last time you've been faithful to something? When's the last time you've been faithful to God? And said, God, I'm leaving it in your hands. You take care of it. But we made provisions for the flesh. I want to quit smoking, Brother Morgan said. But he carried a pack of cigarettes around. Is that how you quit, brother? That ain't how you quit, was it? You got rid of that thing out of your heart. Got rid of that thing out of your heart. I'm I'm not going to live like that no more. That's the way it is. It's not a mystery, brother. It's not a some kind of thing mystical in the air. It's a choice. I told somebody here this last, last week. It's all about a choice. Either I'm going to live for God or I'm not going to live for God. Either I'm going to sin or I'm not going to sin. It's your choice. Daniel said, I'm not going to take the choice of the officers. I'm not going to hide in my room and close my doors and let nobody know I'm praying. I'm not going to hide behind another religion or another decree. I'm not going to hide from my trouble. You want me, devil? Put me in your pit. I'm going to show you. My God's able. I'm not afraid of what you got, devil. I'm not afraid to go down in the pit. I've been down before, and God's brought me up every time. I am able to make it to God. Well, it's quiet here today. I hope y'all listen. I may have to preach another 45 minutes to know if somebody's really got it. Do you know that you have a God that's able? Yes. Quit lying to yourself, saying, I can't do this. It's too much for me. Yes, it is. It's too much for you. Turn it on the Lord. Put your problem in his hands. Put your situation in his hands. Let him work it out for you. That means you don't have to do anything, Pastor. You're a lie to yourself if you believe so. I gotta be faithful. I gotta stand and walk. He said, I'm gonna stand on my watch. I'm gonna stand on my watch. I'm gonna make sure. I don't see the enemy coming. But the watchman just walks. He's on the wall. That's all he's doing. I'm not doing anything. I haven't shot anybody. I haven't seen a spider up in me. But I'm standing on my watch. I'm on my bow, my tower today, if you will. you got to be on the wall today. Standing, saying, hey, I am here for the Lord. I'm not scared about what's happening. try to destroy me or not, I will keep on coming. I will be faithful. You have a God today that's able to take care of all your needs. Every situation that you have. But you're going to have to get up. You're going to stand up. Stand in the face of all adversity. And you're going to have to make it. It's amazing that the king himself would know or give this man security before he went in. The king told him, you read it. I hope you read it. Daniel, your king is able to save you. It's sad when the world has more confidence in our God than we do. It's sad that when some of your friends that don't even know God have more confidence in God than you do. They don't even know Jesus. They'll say, oh, God will take care of it for you. And you're fearful and afraid. He'll do it, but I don't know about for me. Hmm. Well, is God able to do it? Would you stand with me? Look at somebody and say, for real, out of your heart. Is your God able? I, I want you to ask somebody. Say to Hillary, is your God able? Is your God able today? That's what I want to know. I want you to look at somebody and say, is your God able? What do you believe today? Is your God able? What's their answer today? Look at yourself and say, is my God able? 
Put your hands in your name. By God's aid. Let's pray. Great God, I thank you today, Lord, for your love and kindness.